show you where we are right now. J-E-T-S. There it is. Da, da, de, da, da, de, da, da, da. How great is that guy? You know what I mean? We got to get that guy on the show. I have reached out to him a few times and uh, he doesn't get back. He's like, uh, I don't care what I think he's saying. He's like, hey, get out of my face. That's what I think he's saying. By his not saying anything I hear, go screw. You know, I don't know why that is. I don't know why that is. But uh, I love him nonetheless. He did give us permission to use that little clip of the accordion Jets chant. And I am grateful for that. Guys, welcome aboard. This is the Thursday thick of it. Interestingly enough, uh, like the olden days, I'm going to be solo tonight. Tigo's hanging out. Jeremy's going to pop in a little bit later. And we'll bring those guys on and uh, say hello and talk uh, some stats. I mean, I might bring Tigo on a little while just to argue for a minute, just so we can argue for a second. What's up, Tigo? How you doing? You good? Yeah, all right. Good to see Tigo. And uh, yeah, but for the most part, I'm going to be solo tonight. It's going to be interesting. I haven't done it solo in years, in years. So it'll be like the old days when we just started doing this thing we didn't know what the hell was going on we just started talking at night then we would do the after hours jets fest and we just talked until like one in the morning and uh i had no issue with it i was like yeah i'm totally cool now i feel nervous i don't know what it is i feel so naked uh but that all said i'm grateful to be here with you uh as is standard operating procedure the jets have a ton of of a weird, dramatic news that uh, most teams aren't dealing with right now. You don't hear the the uh, Texans dealing with this stuff, the Jaguars, uh, the Cowboy. You don't hear anything. But the Jets, somehow we stay out front, and it's interesting. It makes life interesting for us. But it's really kind of high time that we maybe get into the positive side of things. You know what I mean? Aren't you tired? Aren't you a little tired of all the drama? So we'll see how it goes. I will say that Jets Pauly beat Dakota tonight. That's weird. But congratulations, Jet Pauly. Uh, Jet Pauly uh, came in here first. And uh, Dakota, Dakota, for tonight, lost his belt, his Intercontinental Championship belt, uh, previously held by Tito Santana, uh, taken over by Dakota. Now, for tonight, Jets, Paulie, and Dano followed him. Uh, yeah, so here we go. And then Braden from New Zealand hopping in, and, you know, said, we're going to have to send out a search party for Dakota. I agree. It's unnerving. It's unnerving when Dakota's not first. It's either Dakota or Jay-Z. So if it's not one of those guys, I, I, I feel weird. So I don't know what's up, man. Uh, Eric, well, Eric Craig's here. What's up with you, Eric? Uh, I do see that uh, Dakota did make it. So good. There you go. We're okay. We're okay. Remember uh, Jets Forever? Whatever happened to him? He was at every stream. We'd get the green heart. I miss Jets Forever. And he was slightly controversial. But, you know, hey, we're all allowed our opinions. And uh, I miss, I miss our, I miss our buddy. Uh, Winterich is here. What is good with you, sir? Uh, Nixie's in the house. Good evening to you. Yeah, I know. What is shit, y'all? Right, man. That's what I'm talking about. It's just one of those things. We just can't seem to figure out how to stay out of the, uh, the limelight. Maybe it's by design. Who knows? Like the Jets for a losing organization, everybody. Woody has really figured it out. Like, we know how to stay in the news, generating interest and and probably income out of it uh, the whole time. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter what goes on with the team. We're always out front. We're always getting talked about. So there's money in that, I'm sure. Uh, Duncan's here. That's right. The Combine. You know, that's what uh, that's what this week is all about. Uh, you know, being that I worked all day, I didn't get to, let me see something. Um, 
Let me see what's going on. So we're going to talk about all that stuff. I'm really curious to hear your opinions. I'm also going to open up the phone lines for the second half and get you guys on the show as we've done a couple times. Um, and uh, yeah, it's, I think it'll be cool to hear what you guys say. Hopefully there's no porn. I don't know. It's funny. Jake Asman can let you guys on every week, the whole show, never a booby, never a penis. I do it for five minutes. I can wait a year, do it five minutes again, penis. I don't, I don't know what happens. I don't know what it is. Maybe that's what I attract, Ego. That's just what it is. You know what I mean? That's just what, yeah. That's just what this show is. Penis. <laughs> I don't know. So we'll also talk about some prospects and uh, and all that. Matthias Simon is here. Good to see you, my old friend. And by old, I don't mean, you know, uh, like that we've known each other a long time. I mean, you're old. That's what I'm trying to say. Uh, so hopefully that's okay with you. <laughs> RB Gamers here. Uh, let's go with you. Hennessy's in the house. Harlan's here. Uh, good to see you. Bradigan, our buddy up there in the Chicagoland area. He's here. Uh, let's see. Flight right in the house. What's up, Flight right? Good to see you. GTA V man. Let's he what he's saying is uh long flower girls. That's what he's saying there. I don't know if you guys know what these these abbreviations are for, but that's what that one is. Long flower girls. Uh it's very beautiful that you put that in there. That's appreciated. Dano's in the house, our good buddy. Aurora's here. Uh let's see. Uh proud New York Jet. You know who this guy is? This is Nick Shine. And uh, I recommend staying away from this guy. So he's a dangerous fella. You know, he presents well. He's nice. He goes, hi, I'm a friendly guy. Don't believe it. He's a fucking dangerous fella. You want to be careful with this, <laughs> with this guy. Harry's in the house. Look at this. Everybody's here. This is great. Eddie Hunt is here. I know we're in the news, buddy. And we'll talk about it. Billy's in the house. Era, era faster. Oh man, this is great. Aunt Jets is here. Uh, so many more. Uh, I will tell you, uh, we're going to do the contest tonight. Um, you know, I, I have like three more boxes of the liquid IV. So it's really a great product, man. So I don't mind giving it away. You know, that's, I mean, you know, as far as like sending you guys something that you'll more than likely dig, you know, it's a good thing. Liquid IV is sponsoring the show. You can save 15% off of all of your liquid iv orders go to liquidiv.com and use the promo code green bean jets fan at checkout you'll save 15 percent. the link is in the description it's this stuff right here the hydration multiplier i'm going to give a box away i think i have uh i think i have three maybe four boxes left so every super chat will be uh, will be entered into the drawing at the end of the show to win a box of liquid iv jake won the last one I'm sending that out uh, tomorrow for Jake. And uh, yeah, that's what we'll do. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't and all that jazz. Uh, it's going to be good, man. It's going to be good. So what's the first story uh, that we... Uh, <laughs> that was funny, Tigo. People see the beard and the first thing they think is got to whip out the penis. That's... <laughs> I'll tell you, man. Uh, so what's the story? Let me ask you guys this. So we'll we'll talk about a few things. Uh, but I think we'll start with, uh, you know, Tigo and I talked about it a little bit last night. We dug into some other stories a little bit more. But the Zach Wilson thing, uh, you know, because like we're running, we're, we're running our, our course with this young fella. Now, the hope would be that you can get something for a guy that you used the second overall pick on, right? That's the hope, you know, and, and don't look at his, it's not just that. Not only did we use the second overall pick, but we, we declined trade offers. And, we, and look, we saw a team, the Niners trade up to three right behind us. The thinking was they were hoping to get Zach Wilson. That was the guy that they wanted, but they gave up three first round picks and a third. Oh boy. Oh boy. What we could have done with those three firsts and a third. You think it would have been better than maybe Zach Wilson. Now 
hindsight being what it was or what it is, uh, I think most Jets fans, and this is, you know, my estimation is that most Jets fans at the time wanted Zach Wilson. We There was talk about him being a hybrid of uh, Patrick Mahomes and Aaron Rodgers. And I'll tell you what, if you believe that, of course you're going to take that guy. Fucking A, man. Yeah, Patrick Mahomes and Aaron Rodgers, holy macaroni. So we haven't seen exactly that. It's been slightly less amazing. Uh, than that so here we are zach wilson's time as a new york jet has run its course uh no matter what happens i think that we're gonna see a scenario where the jets have to eat most of his money if you're gonna get any draft capital for this guy you're gonna have to eat the contract uh i haven't looked but i i believe if uh you know, if we end up cutting him, there's a major cap hit too. I mean, the dead cap hit. So we're eating money on this guy, no matter how you slice it, which is kind of sucky. You know, that's, that's what it's, that's what it's going to be, you know? So not only do we, you know, kind of not get that number two overall pick, but, uh, the last kick in the, in the crotch is that, uh, you know, nice big dead cap hit. So that's what we get to have. Uh, to close out the Zach Wilson era, if you will. Now, Joe Douglas allowed, he gave permission to Zach Wilson's agent to seek a trade. So there it is. I mean, now, can they find a team? Can they call the Niners or the Rams or the Chiefs and get something done and kind of convince them that, hey, this is the guy you want as your backup quarterback? Wouldn't it be funny if the Niners did it? Having Sam Darnold and then Zach Wilson, it'd be it'd be funny. I mean, it's a funny thing, right? So, what do you guys think about that? You know, what do you think about Joe Douglas giving him uh, permission to seek a trade? You know, because there was a, at least some chorus this off season for the idea that all right, look, he wasn't supposed to start last year. He did show progress, and you know, we kind of took him through this whole. Uh, maturation process, you know, the trial by fire, if you will. Now he's battle hardened and now you're going to send him to somebody else and he's ready to go. And I don't know how much I buy that. There's also shell shocked or PTSD or whatever, but, um, you know, is it a good idea to hold on to this guy? I mean, you know, where do you, you know, do you like, let's say there's nobody that wants to trade for him. Nobody. Not one team, not one GM, one coach thinks, hey, I'm going to trade for Zach Wilson, whether it's a sixth or a seventh, whatever it might be. Nobody wants to do it. Do you just keep them? I mean, what do you guys think? Let's see. Uh, just when we thought he was gone. I know. <laughs> That's funny. Hmm. Let's see. James Thompson says, I didn't want Zach Wilson or Sam Darnold. I was wanting Josh Allen. I got to be honest with you, Josh Allen was a guy I didn't want either. You know what's funny about that year is that I didn't dislike Lamar Jackson. I mean, it was kind of like this afterthought. I was like, I don't know why. You know, I mean, maybe he's, or can, maybe you can have that top four of, you know, Baker, Mayfield, Sam Darnold, Josh Allen, and uh, who the hell else was it? Sheesh. Josh Rosen. Oh, my gosh. Remember that guy? There were there was quite a few Jet fans that were pounding the table for that fella. And uh, he had the worst career of all of them. But uh, I have to admit, James, I was not on the Josh Allen, uh, Josh Allen train. I thought he's wildly inconsistent. A great arm, great, you know, uh, lots of great attributes. But I thought he's just never going to amount to anything. And I was a little bit wrong on that one. But... Uh, Anyway, I thought he was going to do well in Buffalo because you need a strong arm quarterback with the wind and everything up there. But yeah, man, it's interesting. Uh, let's see here. Don't forget the milk thumbs, right, Dakota? Thank you. Um, let's see if we got any comments here about it, man. Uh, eating Zach's money is all on Woody. Well, the thing is, that would be great. I know, and I don't give a a rat's ass, Matt, about what Woody has to pay. I mean, he's got plenty. Plenty, plenty of money, 
and he has no problem raising prices. He doesn't care, right? So, you know, I don't care about him spending money, but when it hits our cap, that's when I care. When it limits what we can do uh, in player acquisitions or what have you, that's when the problem uh, comes into play. That's right. Yeah, Tigo's saying, don't forget the 49ers came up to three in hopes of getting Zach Will. That's exactly what I'm trying to say. That's exactly it. You know, that's it. So imagine, like, I mean, I would have taken the exact same trade. Just because it's one pick up, you think you need a little bit more? I'm good. I'm good with three firsts and a, and a third. I'm fine with that. Go back to 12. And I think, where, where did Justin feel? I think Justin Fields was 11. So maybe you couldn't have gotten him at 12. But uh, still, I mean, dude, think about this. Zach Wilson at two or a guy like Mac Jones for and three firsts and a third. I think uh, I know which way I'm going. And I felt that way then. I got beat up for it. Nobody liked me. Nobody liked little green bean. Uh, you know. Nobody liked me. What are you saying there? So Tigo's saying, don't forget that everybody in the building wanted Josh Allen except for McCagden. Is that true? I don't know, Tigo. I don't know if that's true. Let me bring Tigo on real quick. Is that true? You got babies? Yeah. It's all right. I don't but know that if that's the, true. That's, that's, a, that's what I've been told. Nick said uh, this, is, this is a Nick Shine report that he talked with, I believe it was Chris Sims, one of the Sims. Uh, that was tied into the building, and they said that um, everybody in the building wanted Josh Allen except for McCagnan, and ultimately the decision came down to McCagnan, and he took uh, Sam Darnold. We had that whole story about the Jets wanting Sam Darnold for three years. Remember that story? Yep. I don't know. What a what a terrible thing, Digo. You know? Sam Donald followed by Zach Wilson. Let me ask you this before, uh, before you bounce out. Do you believe that if we had like a an established, like good quarterback coach and all that, that either Sam or Zach, their career trajectory would have been different? I I don't know about Sam because Sam, when he came to the NFL, was the Sam that we saw at USC, you know, very like Big arm, could make every throw on the field, but was also very turnover prone. But Zach is always going to be, at least in my opinion, a player that I'm always going to be like, what if we didn't go rookie OC? What if Greg Knapp was around? What would have happened if we had a veteran offensive coaching staff in place instead of a rookie one, you know, to go with a rookie head coach and then a rookie offensive coordinator? always felt like a mistake and we with hindsight being 2020 we can see that it was a mistake so i think sam was exactly what he probably would have ended up being but i would have yeah. loved to see what zach would have become with a real like coach like what would he look like if he ended up in san francisco yeah right and i and i don't disagree with that you know what i mean like i i actually lean that way the, the you know we forget and I, and I, you know, maybe we're just tired of hearing it as an excuse, but the Greg Knapp thing crushed our initial plans, in my opinion. Like we had Calabrese for the first time. You had LaFleur as a first time OC. Greg Knapp was supposed to take care of the sideline and kind of be the development guy. He, he you know, and that's what he's a specialist. And he, you know, regretfully and sadly passed away. Um, so it kind of threw everything you know, in, in upheaval. And when they brought Kavanaugh on, he did a good job that first year. You saw the progress toward the end of the year. And then they had that statement when they let him go. We wanted to get less voices in the room. Well, what does that mean? That means Kavanaugh and LaFleur didn't see eye to eye. You know, that's what, yeah, that's what that means. It means that Kavanaugh with all his experience, uh, for some reason, LaFleur and him couldn't get along. And, uh, another guy that LaFleur pushed off the team. Uh, in my opinion. So uh, anyway, I'll let you go to the kids. I appreciate you being here. I'll I'll bring you on a couple of times if if that's okay with you. Yeah. Right. Oh, look at that. How'd you oh my that? God. I forgot Mac does this. 
Yeah, I don't, I don't, I'm a, I don't like to, I'm always resistant to the new operating systems, Tigo. I've, I've got resistant. both. I've got a PC, like when I'm in my setup in the office and everything's going on, that's, a, that's my desktop, that's a PC, and, but my laptop is a Mac, so I got both. Yeah. Yep. All right, buddy. I'll see you in a sec. There he goes. Whoops. That's not the way to do it. There it is. There he goes. Talking Jets with Tigo dropping the knowledge. Uh, Dakota says, I never fell for the Trey Lance stuff at the time because I fell for the Zach Wilson. Yeah, there it is. So you were running. And that's the thing. Like, look, there's nothing wrong with owning it. Like, it's it's really funny. It's hard to find these days people that go, oh, man, I loved Zach Wilson. But let me tell you, it, it felt like 90% of Jets fans. I was on an island and I dude, the DMS and shit that I was getting. Then I would make a video just talking about other potential quarterbacks in the draft or, or free agents. And people would, I mean, my comments would be like, you're a hater. You're a fucking hater. I see what you're doing. You think we don't see what you're doing here with this? You know, you're just, you know, you're just hating and you're trying to lace it up with some constructive bullshit. I'm like, I don't, I don't know what to tell you, man. I mean, I don't fucking like him. I really don't. I, he makes me terrified. And, uh, and not, not least of which was because of his cute face. When's the last time a guy with that cute of a face did well in the NFL? I mean, who tell me, tell me the cute guys that do it, you know? Even the guys like the Corbettes of the world, good looking fella. He's got like a hard, chisely. There's different, man. He doesn't look like Zach. Zach like looks like a baby boy, you know? Who the hell can make it looking like that? I mean, I would, you know, I don't know. Uh, Johnny Football said that he just read a report that the Niners and Broncos are out on Wilson. Well, reports are reports, man. You know, I don't know how serious anything is. I still think the best situation for Zach would be to sit behind Mahomes uh, in Kansas City. I mean, I think that would be a gold mine for him, truly. Because number one, Mahomes plays most of the game. So he, you know, he's not a, he's not more than likely, so does Aaron Rodgers, but more than likely he won't have to come in. But sitting with Mahomes and Andy Reid can only can only do well for him, man only do well uh the main catch thank you so much for the super chat my friend he says green bean monday night mock with us trading the number 10 pick for iu and swapping first round picks was an awesome mock i definitely be okay with that scenario zach is in my opinion worth a sixth at best and i you know what's funny man i'm starting to feel that way but i was really hoping like a fourth and, and that just doesn't seem realistic it really doesn't. I think a sixth, a straight up, would be a nice, a nice little gift. I don't know if that. I I really do think we're more than likely gonna get a like a sixth or fifth at best pick swap. Like you know, you we just move up in the round. That's that's what I see, and it's sad to say, but I will tell you this: I agree. Main catch about that mock see that's you know every now and then it's like we do these mock scenarios right if you guys haven't checked out the monday night ten, they, it's a 10 o'clock mock right so we do 10 o'clock on mondays right here we explore different scenarios like the jets are trading bryce Huff, the jets are trading zach wilson this week what we did was we traded 10 for brandon iuk in 31 so we moved back now people say oh this is unrealistic maybe you got to throw something else in that's fine but that's what we did. And it gave us the opportunity. Because you know, you you guys know, a lot of these drafts that we do, you see the same folks. You see Fuaga, you see Fashanu, you see Latham. You know, there's a little bit of change, but it's the same guys. And then you get to the third, and there's the Cooper BBs, and, you know, all the stuff that that you see, right? We were able to get all the way back to, you know, to the back end of the first already having taken care of wide receiver. Now, some people like Kareem didn't like him. Kareem was trying to tell us that, that uh, Ayuk is a scrub, even though he had 1,300 yards last year and 1,100 or something like that the year before. 
either way, he's better than, let's say, Lazard. Okay? Let's say Gibson, right? He's an improvement. So as, as a guy to, to put alongside of, of, uh, of G-dubs. So when we do that, it's like, okay, wide receiver is done. Now we're sliding back to the 31. What do we do? And we gained, I think we, um, I don't know if we gained a second in that one uh, somehow. But either way, we were able to kind of look at the draft through an entirely different lens. What's possible? So what did we do at 31? We took JPJ. Holy cow. Now we're, look at this interesting shift. You know, so I I don't know. I agree with you, main catch. I I really enjoy exploring that stuff, which was the whole purpose of the Monday Night Mock in the first place. You know, when I first started doing it, it was like, well, let's learn about this stuff. You know, I mean, it's a different era. Even three or four years ago, there there wasn't quite as many experts as there are now. Everybody, you know, everybody's doing mocks and everybody's reading JetX and, and all the sites. Back then, it was a little bit less. So we were able to kind of go through this process and educate people um, about a lot of the ways that 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 the draft can fall and some of the tactics that you use and even things like need versus uh, best player available and all that kind of stuff. We had a great time. Remember Jets by Jimmy, everybody? He was my host for a year, my co-host. Uh, it was really cool. So anyway, I'm glad that you were checking that you checked it out, Main Catch, and uh, I love having you here, man. I love having you around. Uh, let's see what else we got here. Yeah, uh, Nick's not taking the bait on Cuca, dude. I'm telling you, the cuter they are, the farther I stay away. That's what it is. If they're good looking, I'm like, mm. you know, that's just how I feel. Especially like quarterback. Like I don't know, man. They got to have some edge. Right, Zach Wilson. He was never pressured in college. He threw the ball and remember the the pass in this in his pro day. Woo! I'm like, dude, they're, they're in shorts. I mean, I mean, I can't throw that pass. Let's make no mistake. But it's like, I don't know. I don't know what we're all fawning over. I really don't get it. Uh, David points out, and he's correct. Uh, Mills loves Zach. That's what we've learned. Uh, that's one of the things that we've learned about him. Uh, one Jets pod wanted Mac Jones over Zach Wilson. Well, the, the whole thing with me, one, I didn't necessarily want Mac Jones, but I looked at Zach Wilson, Trey Lance, Mac Jones, Kyle Trask. I, I had them all in a similar category. The truth is, is I had Justin Fields above all those guys. I really did. I, it was like Trevor Lawrence was the clear number one for me, and I was furious that the Jets blew it. I was furious about that, that we decided to win a game. Did you see the Jags? When they got that number one pick, dude, they benched everybody. That's how you do it. That's how you do it. This bullshit like, oh, we're going to win some games. Like, No foresight. No foresight. So, uh, yeah, man. Like firing Greg Williams for the for the zero blitz thing. They don't fucking fire him. Let him do that again. You know, what are you doing? So I don't know. We got to like a couple games away from the end of the season and we blew it. We get the number two pick. And is I mean, look, I brought it up a hundred times, but it's really a funny thing. It's it's the it's the most jetsy thing of all, guys, that we have been like we have the longest playoff drought in all professional sports in North America. And we've perpetually been among the laughing stocks of the league, but we've never had the number one pick, or at least not since 1997. 97. So that's 2007, 2017. So that's 20, and then seven, so three. So that's 27 years of sucktitude for the most part, and we've never been the worst team in the league. That is Jets. That's the Jets. But yeah, but after Trevor Lawrence, I thought Justin Fields was the next guy. If you're going to do it, I don't know, this Zach Wilson thing. But it's over, guys. It's going to be over. Let's see what else we got. Hey, Larry. Well, I love you, Duder. It's good. It's fun to do this stuff. 
Ah, oh, haters here. Billy's here. You guys are the best, man. Skipperoo. What's the Skipperoo had? Skipperoo had lunch. I never wanted Zach. Douglas screwed the pooch with all his drafts. If he had listened to me, we would be a great dude. Skipperoo, me and you. I'm telling you. The good, look, the only thing I can say up until last year, even though some, you know, some of the picks didn't work, I at least understood the logic behind what Joe Douglas was doing. It made sense for the first time in a long time. You know, like the positions that he was drafting, you know, it made sense. The fact that Becton, who's never had an injury, in, you know, a, a real injury in college, ABT, no injury to speak of, Cam Clark, no injury to speak of in college, like the offensive line guys. Look at Lakin Tomlinson. He was the number one free agent that year for the offensive line. We got him. I was ecstatic. So the fact that it hasn't worked, I mean, obviously it's Joe Douglas, but it's is it really? The fact that AVT went down two years in a row, the fact that Beckton went down two years in a row, is that Joe? Do I mean, I don't know. I mean, I, I, the fact that Cam Clark got almost paralyzed. Cam Clark was this nasty road grader type of offensive lineman. He was playing tackle, but he was moving inside. So the first year they kind of they gave him that pass year, the red shirt, and then they were. The second year, he was going to be given every opportunity to win the job. We got a couple guys. What what the hell were the guys we 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 brought in? They were backup level. Adrian something. Do you remember Tigo? The guys that we brought in that year. We brought in. We still had. I believe we still had Van Roten. Uh, who the hell else did we have? But anyway, so we were we were going to give. We wanted we wanted Cam Clark to win the job. And uh, he ended up almost getting paralyzed. They had to shut down practice, and thankfully he wasn't. And But he never played again. Never, never played again. So it's one of those things, man. It's like there's been a lot of bad luck. And, and again, Lakin Tomlinson is way at the top of that weird luck thing. It's like he was a smart uh, free agent signing every dude think about it. We had his coaching staff here. We're playing in the same system. They were only one year removed from him being with our staff. Uh, that was 2021, I believe because yeah, no, they drafted camp Clark. Yeah, that was 2021. So I, I think we had like Josh, I want to say Myers, but that doesn't feel right. Uh, Alexander um, from the Eagles. And then we, I think we had Van Roten. Like we wanted Cam Clark to beat those guys out and they would have been good depth. And instead they ended up starting and then it sucked. <laughs> oh, it was so bad. So bad. I know. Well, that's the thing. We can't blame him for injuries. I mean, especially when you're not drafting injury prone guys. It's one thing when you'd use, when you trade away a legendary player like Darrell Revis, and then you use that pick to draft a cornerback in the first round, and he's a perpetually injured corner. He's injured while you draft him. That's a stupid move. Like, number one, drafting his replacement. Just in general, with that pick, sets him back. He, he's at a deficit. You Now you're going to be compared to Revis. But not only that, D. Milliner, he was always injured. That's a different story. That was a dumb pick. You know what's funny? I was actually, at that draft, I was watching Allison Chains live at the Fillmore in Miami. And I had my phone. And I was like watching the draft. And when they picked D. Milliner, I literally went, oh. it's literally what I did. I looked up into the, into the ceiling, the beautiful, well-curated ceiling of the Fillmore in Miami Beach, the Jackie Gleason Theater, and I went, oh. <laughs> it's exactly what I did. Are you fucking kidding me? And what did we see? Milner had essentially one game worth of shit. My buddy, Jason Edwards, man, 
What's up, dude? Good to see you. A member of the Stream Beaners for 11 months, dude. That's so great. Uh, this is your 11 month super chat. So thank you for the support, Jason. You know how I feel about you. I hope your son's doing well. Uh, he says, I miss the days of benching your rookie quarterback for two or three years and learning the system. I know the rookie pay scale changed that. Dude, you and me both. I, and I, look, us older fellows, I'm older than you, but you know we're definitely a different generation than right now. And that was kind of standard operating procedure. You would bring a quarterback in, it was you were less likely to throw him to the wolves than than today. Today it's like you need to be good now. And if you have a rough rookie year, everybody starts thinking that you're a bust and it's crazy. Back in the day, back in my day, we would take quarterbacks and let them sit on the bench and hold a clipboard for 3 years. Oh, so much better. But that's the way it was. You know, by the time they started, they were ready to go. And that's what Green Bay has been doing since forever. And it's working, dude. It's working better than what we're doing. We draft people at the top of the round, throw them into the fire. They melt. And then we grab another one, even cuter. Can we find a cuter kid to melt in the fire? Yeah, there's one. Get him. And we throw him to the wolves. He disintegrates before our eyes, and we're like, that guy's an asshole. And then they start telling him to kill himself in the stands. It, we're, it's, not, it's not a recipe for success. But then Green Bay, what they've been doing is what Jason is talking about. They have a quarterback. Before he's toast, they bring in another high-level quarterback, maybe not top uh, you know, the top quarterback, but somebody good, and they let him learn for two, three years. And then they move on from the legend. And they let the guy start, and it has worked, dude, for a long time. For a long time. Oh, my God, we suck. I'm sick of it, Jason. I'm sick of it. Jonathan Francois, what's up, buddy? Good to see you too, man. How do you rank the quarterbacks this draft? My hot take is Rattler will be the best of the bunch. I think Caleb will be a bust and don't take North Carolina quarterbacks. Well, I'll tell you what, Rattler freaks me out. You know, he, right. He just, he freaks me out, dude. I, I don't know what that kid's going to be. I, I really don't. Is he, he, he can end up being this really exciting kind of electric guy, or he can just be a moron. You know, I mean, who just, you look at it and go, why would anybody draft this guy? So I don't know. But I will tell you, I do not like Caleb Williams for a couple of reasons. So Tigo, I'm going to bring you on. Tigo's wagging his finger and shit. When you're ready, just sit straight. I don't want to pressure you. You don't, you don't want to come on? Okay, no sweat. Um, He's wagging his finger at me nonetheless. Uh, so. Here's, I have to admit, one of the reasons that I don't want Caleb Williams uh, or I don't like Caleb Williams, I know we're not getting Caleb Williams, but uh, because the Jets' last two quarterbacks that we traded up to get were USC quarterbacks. And, like, name the best USC quarterback. What's his name? Palmer? I mean, they don't really, you know, I mean, and they, it's just like... It doesn't mean that the next guy is going to be the same as all his predecessors, but there's definitely something to pay attention to there. And I just don't like it. But the other thing is, is like, I don't really, I don't like, I, I just, maybe I'm old school or whatever. I don't mind a quarterback being able to, to run out of the, you know, to, to use his feet and, 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 and all that, like, uh, like whoever, Justin Fields, Lamar Jackson, whatever. But I don't like when it looks like that's their whole game. And it it bothers me, you know. So my favorite quarterback in the whole draft, interestingly enough, and you know, it's kind of contradictory, but is Michael Penix. But he his injury history, dude, it's insane. I do we cannot bring a player like that to the Jets. Never. Can't do it. He's gonna be injured walking off the plane. Woody's going to be there to greet him and he's going to fall and he's going to be out for two years. That's the way. That's the way. 
<laughs> um, but yeah, you know who I like up top is uh, Jaden Daniels. I I think he's a guy uh, that I think he's the he's the guy that you know the team that grabs him is going to get the gem up top. And then there are some other. I think JJ McCarthy's got some real uh, some real possibilities. But like for us. I look, I, I know it's cliche at this point, but I love the idea of Jordan Travis in the fourth. If he's there in the fourth, I see no reason why to take him or why not to take him. We have two, four, two fourth round picks. Go ahead and do it. You know what I mean? So the thing is, I'm not really, I mean, I'm look, I looked at quarterbacks and I will again, but I'm not really focused on the quarterbacks because it's not, in my opinion, our area of concern. I think that we should bring a vet in behind Aaron Rodgers and you can use a mid-round pick, late-round pick on somebody to develop uh, if you'd like. But, you know, I don't know. I think this this Aaron Rodgers thing has to work, Jonathan. Like, that's it. And And every bit of our resources should be going toward ensuring that that works to the best of our ability. Whatever it is, if you have another 25 cents and you can get one more bazooka Joe and it's going to support it. Then you spend it on it. You do is that's it. And give me that. It's probably going to have a little bit of a uh, impact, but give it to me. Nonetheless, that's the way we have to think. In my opinion, it has to work. We can't pussyfoot around this one. We pussyfooted last year. It blew up in our face in spectacular fashion. Dr. Sloot says, Calvin Pryor, I know. And not only did we use a first on Calvin Pryor, but that was, at that point, the strongest wide receiver draft in NFL history. And guess what? We needed a wide receiver. And we took a friggin' safety. Brandon Cooks was the, was the pick. I couldn't believe he was still there. I'm like, oh my God, this is great. We're going to get Brandon Cooks. Nope. The Louisville slugger. Jay Samaro Hennessy says, yeah, you know what? Jace was a good pick. He had a great rookie year. <laughs> I don't know what fucking uh, these guys, he fell off a cliff. I don't know what happened to Jay Samaro. Braden says the curse became truly apparent to me. Greg, now I know, man, it's like, you know, that's an extreme case, but it's, it does it not fall right in line. Uh, all right. So Tigo said, so that year, um, Greg Van Roten, Dr. Blocker, who we got much later, we got him, you know, right before the trade deadline, Morgan Moses, Chumi Idoga, Connor McDermott. No, there were other guys. There were other guys. There was the guy from that we got from the Eagles. Um, and maybe he was 2020. Maybe look at 2020. He's a uh, Josh Alexander, I want to say, or Myers or something like that. Fuck pro football reference. What do they know? I actually like them. That's my favorite uh, stat site. My favorite. I trust them. I trust them. Oh, my God, Cuca. Why are you bringing up Dimitri Patterson? Remember that guy? Remember that situation? We drafted Dexter McDougal, who was an inj always injured third round pick cornerback. And we had Dimitri Patterson as, as cornerback one. And he was, I mean, he, he like left in the middle, like right before a game, he just decided to leave. They said, where is he? We said, I don't know. I don't know where he is. Good stuff. You know, main catch member for four months. Thank you for the support, my friend. Uh, here's the super chat for your stream beaner support. He says, we've had such a large turnover rate at coaching. There isn't much time for these youngsters to develop a, a system because it's always challenging. Well, that's the thing. It's like, look, at what point, like, where's the line, right? Main catch, like you have a guy, um, you know, well, you have a team that, you know, four years is basically max, right? Gase got two, Rex got six. But Bowles gets four. Stala's uh, going into his fourth. Lots of people wanted him fired this year. Uh, who was before Rex? Mangini got three. Right? Before Mangini, it was Herm. He got, I think, five. Four. 
but it's like you know even still it's like we're constantly changing the the regime so there's no real time to like install an actual organization we keep ripping it up and starting over so when you bring in these young kids i mean you know we give them five minutes to develop we're cutting off our nose to spite our face So it's like, I mean, we're really, I mean, dude, we're not doing it right. We're not doing it right. I'm telling you, I maintain, dude, I maintain this and I believe this. If Woody would, if Joe Douglas doesn't work out, rather than going to the next retread guy or the next, what, just hire me, dude. Just hire me. What can it hurt? Hire me. I'll work for half the price. Give me three years guaranteed. Fucking fix this joint. I'll be walking around. They'll call me the hammer. You want to know why? Because I'll be walking around with a fucking hammer. <laughs> you know, it's like you got to make people aware. Like, listen, you. I don't care what your name, pedigree, contract. I don't care about any of it. You're going to do what we need you to do. And if you're not, you're going to be sitting on the bench. And if the, next week you want to you want to do what we want you to do, if I see you out there like Jordan Whitehead, two years he won't wrap his arms. No way, not on my team, not on my team, man. I'm on the sideline, barking. I have a whole slew of us on my crew. Ugh. And look, clearly there's a lot that I would have to learn. You know, I mean, I'm not stupid, but at the same time, I look over the past 20 years of the guys I wanted in the draft. I'd say I'm 75% with no exaggeration, especially in the top three, four rounds. No doubt. The guys I would have picked turn out better than the Jets guys almost routinely. The one year, 2022, Joe Douglas knocked it out of the park. Uh, I've said this the other night. My draft would have been Thibodeau, uh, Kyle Hamilton, George Pickens, and Brees Hall because we had two seconds. That's it. So it's still a very good draft, but I think Joe Douglas did better. But other than that, shit. I mean, dude, I can go back and back and back. Dude, my guys are, are – some of them are in the fucking Hall of Fame. The year Parcells in 97 traded the number one overall pick, he passed on Orlando Pace, Walter Jones, both in the Hall of Fame, which I would have taken Orlando Pace. Or if you're going to trade back, you got to get a haul. He got a third, a fifth, and a seventh, or whatever the hell it was, to trade back from the first overall pick. So, you know, like again, my guy, Hall of Fame. Parcells guy, Better on the Steelers, not Hall of Fame. It's like, it's just, and it's time and time and time and time again. Uh, I'll tell you, and it's not that hard. It's not like I'm brilliant, right? It's like, I just been paying attention. Like every year we talk about it. The guys that we want, the Jets don't pick them. They're all great all over the damn league. And we're, we're stuck with, you know, with all due respect, Cam Clark. You know what I mean? Fucking James Morgan. That's what we're doing. Or the Idzik 12. <laughs> the Idzik 12. Holy macaroni, the Idzik 12, guys. Let me tell you, that draft was so incredibly frustrating for me. Again, I think the, Jason Mara was, well, Mara was that year. That was the only pick that I was like, okay, good. <clears throat> Even though I, I did want a wide receiver at that point. I think it was Jordan Matthews, who had like three really good years and then just kind of fizzled. But, um, Anyway, Hennessy checking in. What's up, buddy? Clearly they know something we'd ask right. You know what would be great? Like, uh, just to continue this fantasy of mine. If I was in that position and I did know more than us, then I could actually, like, I, I would actually kind of, I wouldn't, it's not to say I would tell everybody what's going on, but, you know, like to have that in, I would look at it and be like, dude, no way. 
like all this, they, they, there's too much information in my opinion, too much. It's like going to the, you know, you go to seven 11 and there's 875 drink choices and you always get the same two drinks. Walk in and grab your fucking drink. You know what you like, damn it. You know what I'm saying? Like for me, it's like diet Coke, diet, uh, Dr. Pepper. Maybe I get a water. That's it. I look around. I'm like, oh, Celsius. What the hell is that? Oh, this fucking bubo. What's bubo? And I'm reading a can. Like, I'm not getting that. What am I doing here for 45 minutes? That's, I think, what's going on. There's too much information. You sit down with these kids. You look at your needs. You look at the talent. You look at what they've done on the field. You include the combine stuff, but it doesn't change a damn thing. It just, you know, from the guys you like from the game film, the combine can move those guys around. The combine shouldn't bring anybody into the conversation, in my opinion, that wasn't already on your on your radar from the game film. That's the that's the football. Are they football players? Yes, Dom C, you would absolutely be my director of scouting. Jeremy would be, you know, with what the Jets got a C in food. You know what I mean? The Jets, we got the report card. They got a C in their food for the players. Jeremy, all over that. He'd be like, hey, what are you doing? Jeremy takes care of the food. Dom's helping me out with the scouts. You know what I mean? And we go from there. We go from there, everybody. Uh, Nate Herbig. No, I'm not thinking about. I'll, I'll hold on. Let me see. Let me see here. Let me see here. I'll tell you who it is. A Alex Lewis. Jeez. Oh my God. That was 2020. Remember Alex Lewis? Jeez, Luis. Oh my God. Let's, what do we got here? Pat Elfline. Oh, yeah. That's the guy I want him to sign in free agency this year now. He sucked, dude. I'm so sick of it. Um, Let me see here. I'm telling you, there's a guy. I, his name was Alex, Alexander or something. Who is this guy? Who are these guys? Zach Wilson. Oh, my God. All right. Let's see here. Josh Andrews. That, that, that's him. That's the guy. Josh Andrews. 2021. He was a uh, backup center, but he ended up playing for us. Let me see. Pat Elfline. Uh, Math uh, no, no, no. Okay. Anyway. That's the guy, Josh Andrews. I said Alexander. I meant Josh Andrews. That's who it is. Let's see. Look at this. Look at this. Ablab, what's up, dude? Good to see you, man. Thank you so much for the purple pinkish super chat. I appreciate it, dude. Sincerely. Uh, gang, Mr. Bean and Jets Nation. How's it going? I've been out of the loop. Are we looking like a competent gang yet? Any juicy rumors? Dude, it's been nuts, Ab Lab. It's been nuts out there. Whether it's the baloney about Robert Sala locking everybody in the room to steal their cell phones, <laughs> or Joe Douglas uh, bending over for Aaron Rodgers. I mean, it, it just goes on and on and on. We fired Rex Hogan. Although I don't know what it is. The last like five guys that we got rid of, it was, they used the term mutually agreed to part ways. I don't know what that is. Can we just decide who did it? Did they want to leave or did you want them to go? We mutually agreed to part ways. Fucking, what is this? What is this? Have a sack. We fired him. We cut him. That's what they need to say, Ablab. But yeah, it's been nuts. Now what's going on, I'm not sure if you heard this, is the Nicole Hardman stuff. Nicole Hardman's been out there on an anti-Jets tour. 
And in large part, what he said was, uh, I know what winning is and the Jets aren't it. The Jets don't know how to do it. I've been to four Super Bowls in five years. I know what winning looks like and the Jets are lost. Then the Jets players came back, Avlab, and said it started with sauce, but he deleted the tweet. But then Kenny Yaboa and Morstead, they came out and said, well, how did the Eagles get our uh, game plan? So the, the word on the street is that, and it's been confirmed that the Jets at least believe this, that uh, Nicole Hardman was giving out the Jets game plans. They gave, he gave it to the Eagles and the Chiefs. Which, interestingly enough, we had our best game versus the Eagles and Zach's best game against the Chiefs. Maybe he should have did that shit more. I don't know. But, man, we haven't stopped. The, the drama train has continued running, man. Has continued going. It hasn't stopped. So, uh, lots of juicy rumors. Um I don't know. Going into the combine, though, I, it's going to be fun to kind of compare, you know, the drills and everything. Again, like I'm a believer that if you don't have somebody on your board because of the the accomplishments that they've put together on the football field, there shouldn't be anybody that has a good combine that all of a sudden makes it on your board. They should already be there. If they're not, then the combine shouldn't do it. The combine should help you sort things when you can see the pure athleticism and all that shit and then obviously the interviews you know the interviews are key you sit down with somebody and they're like Doo -ee! you're like all right i don't care what this guy i can't talk to this guy you know what i mean like remember uh what was his name jakai polite he showed up to the combine he was like he was being talked about as a first round pick and he shows up to the compound the 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 combine like 20 pounds overweight um, really unhealthy looking, slow. And it was like, and his interviews were terrible. Like what happened? And then, so who takes them? The Jets. <laughs> we are the best. Ablab, you, you're the best, man. I appreciate you sincerely. Uh, thank you for that one, man. But yeah, I'll tell you, you could like, you could stop paying attention to the Jets for any length of time. And when you come back, it's the same. I think I told you, uh, there was a, there's a, a guy that I know. I can call him a friend, but, uh, he stopped. He says, stop paying attention to the jets. Like 10 years ago. He said it was too painful. He says, I'm just sick of it. I'm sick of wasting my energy, my time. And I said, I was talking to him at the, before this season started. I said, Dude, but I'm telling you, this year, man, it looks like it really might be something. He said, well, let me ask you this. In the past 10 years, did I miss anything? And I said, no. <laughs> no, nothing. There's nothing to report, sir, that you don't already know from the previous years. It's the same. You can just check back in whenever you want. It's the same. Tom Cahill checking in. Thank you, sir. He says, Green Bean, I really think they're listening to all these criticisms, whether they do anything. Yeah, I mean, I think so, too. I think they have staff that are watching the YouTube verse and the Twitter sphere and all those things. They're definitely they have they have a team that their entire job is to kind of pay attention to all this shit. Now, whether or not they're watching me, I don't know. Although, I don't know if you guys saw this, but Sauce Gardner retweeted my uh, uh, Talking Jets put out a clip uh, of me talking about Sauce from our, one of our Talking Jets panels, uh, not this week, but the week before. And Sauce saw it and said, uh, hey, thank you for those words, man. And that was, uh, that was cool. That was pretty cool. I can find it, I think. Let me see if I find it for you guys. Why not? You guys are my friends. Why not? Let's see what happens here. We'll go to the talking jets. We'll do that. Let's see what we got here. Where is it? Here it is. So, okay. Here, I'll show you guys this. Here you go, Tom. This is for Tom Cahill. So, you guys see it? So, 
Sauce Gardner right there retweeting uh talking jet show. Not bad. A little green bean action. Let's see what he said. Tough at first. Like, um, I think uh, yeah, I mean, look, Sauce is legit. You know what I mean? Sauce is a bona fide star. He's crazy talented. He has um, you know, two consecutive all pros. And he's a likable guy. Like he's, I think, you know, he's like real dry, right? Like his personality's tough at first. Like if you don't, you know, pay attention, he can come across as something other than he is, but he's like jovial. He's funny. Even the thing with the cheese head and burning it and the, the whole thing, it's like, he's funny. He's a young guy. He's having a good time. He's funny. He's clearly a stud, puts in the work. Him, Garrett Wilson, Brees Hall. If those guys want to go out there and recruit other players, who better? Um, I think there it uh, is. Hopefully you can hear that. Could they hear that, Tigo? Yeah, cool. All right. Green Dog checking in. He says, I've been watching the Patriots documentary on Apple. It's crazy how the Pats can act like victims when they caught videotape. I do it. I'm telling you. That's what's called controlling a narrative, right? You can paint any picture you want. But the truth is the Patriots are scumbags. And even the whole thing with Brady. Dude, Brady, they're like, oh, Brady took less money. He didn't take a dollar less, okay? Just on the books, he did. It just so happens that the TB12 vitamin thing, which is Tom Brady's company, the number one customer was the Patriots. Fuck are we doing here? What are we stupid? You know? Are we stupid? Are we dumb? Are we a bunch of children who don't know how the world works? Are we dumb, everybody? That's what I want to know. The answer? Yes. Yes, we are. We are dumb children. We are lemmings. We just go, all right, well, I guess that's the real story. They put out a documentary, and we go, oh, I didn't know that. Bullshit. We watched the Patriots. The Patriots were caught cheating four times, and Bill Belichick was not suspended for five seconds. Come on. What is that? Yet yeah, Brees Hall lowers his shoulder, and they throw a $43,000 fine on him. Like, what the hell is happening in this world? You know what I mean? <laughs> uh, Hennessy says, uh, don't forget about the three cone drill, Green Bean. Doesn't matter that DK Metcalf's good at football. There's no way. That's right. Can't do it. You can't do it, dude. It's clearly not, not good. Like you see what he does on the field. You see how fast he is. You see all the stuff. And then he runs a drill. It's not good. It's not what you want to see. And you go, I ah, can't take that guy. Like, what is that? Like, here's the thing. If Green Bean's a GM, what you're going to see compiled is a huge, massive collection of football players. They'll be fast, they'll be strong, but they'll be aggressive and they will be football players. I don't want one guy that he's a track star and he plays a little football and we think we can turn, I, get the fuck out of here. I don't want that guy. I'd rather take the guy who's played football his whole life since he's eight years old. Grew up, you know, he played in Miami or played in Texas. Animals. They live, eat, sleep, breathe, football. That's what you would see. And I would have barbecues with my guys. I'd be sitting there. I'd go, hey, what do you say? We go out there as a group of men and we absolutely batter the other group. How's that sound to you? Arr! And I feed them meat and, and bone and ribeyes. Go eat these bone and ribeyes, you son of a bitch. And I fucking give them all that shit and potatoes. And I say, let's go. All I want to see is you guys beat the living hell out of the team in front of you. That's it. Get into the end zone. Remember, four yards of play wins the game. That's all I'm saying. Not that that's all we'll do, but that's all we got to do. You see the difference? 
four yards of play wins every single game. And I'm tired of it being more complicated than that. It's not more complicated. It's football. All these analytics and shit, they go, well, technically speaking, it's a better odds to do to kick the punt than that. Yeah, well, I'm not feeling that way in this game. The energy in this stadium doesn't feel. We're going to punch him in the face instead. How's that sound, analytics guy? Because it's football. And I can see that their team is huffing and puffing. And I can see that my team is rearing the go. We're going to kick them right in the nuts. That's what we're going to do instead of the percentage odds today. That's what I'm saying. All I'm saying. It's football. We've overcomplicated the game of football. That's my thoughts on the matter. Hey, Jet Show, what are you doing, buddy? Good to see you, man. Where you been? Fucking hiding. Ah, uh, I'll tell you guys. Rusty Spooner's in the house. Hopefully, Hartman gets. His... Well, they wouldn't land on us, but it'd be nice to take their picks away. Screw it. You know what you do? You go, hey, we'll lay off the. We will pull back on the tampering thing if you give us a third round pick for Zach Wilson. <laughs> They're going to take your first for tampering. You give us a third for Zachy Poo, and we'll stop. And you can keep your first. That's what that's the way to do it. That's what I'd be doing. I'm telling you guys, you guys want me as the GM. I'd call that guy and go, hey, sucks, huh? So I, I would say, hey, so. Turns out that you were talking to my players uh, while they were with me. I didn't know that when I traded them to you. I had no idea. So here's the thing. I'm going to really put on the full court press for this tampering charge. I'm not going to shut up about it. I'm going to make the biggest deal in the world. I'm going to ruin that kid's career, and I'm going to try with every fiber of my being to get your picks taken away. or. You give me a third for Zach Wilson, eat that contract, and we'll call it a day. That's what I do. And then they'd say, the Chiefs and Jets trade for Zach Wilson, and they took on the contract. Give him a third-round pick, and everybody go, oh, my God, I can't believe I am. That's right. That's how it goes. It's football. That's it. That's what's up. Uh, RB Gamer says, who do you think we end up with uh, backup quarterback? Here's who we're going to end up with. You're going to see, now my choice would be Jacoby Brissett. Oh, I'd love Minshew. You guys know, I mean, me and Gunny last year, we were talking about uh, Minshew the whole time. That was my number one backup quarterback guy. I'd love it if they just went out there and paid the extra whatever to get them. I don't see it. I'd love Brissett. We'll see. What's going to happen is the Jets are going to go out there and scoop up Tannehill, and I'll be fine with that. It's not, I don't love it, but I'd be fine with it. You know, Tan, think about, and then I'd really love to use a mid round pick on a Jordan Travis on a Sam Hartman, you know, one of those guys. Just as long as not Joe Milton. If they pick Joe Milton, dude, I'm going to I'm going to disintegrate before your eyes. I'm telling you. I'm like, eh, I'm melting. That's what'll happen. Like I can't believe it. I just can't believe how stupid this franchise is. We really like his mother <laughs> or some shit like that. We love how her mother makes make great meatballs. And I don't know. I don't know. But, um, yeah. Who's the kid from Tulane? Let me see. Michael Pratt? Yeah. That'd be good. Oh, I don't know. Let's see. Alan Day. Hey, Alan. Beanbagger, man. What's up? We hung out last night. Had ourselves a good time looking at some uh, in-depth J.C. Laysom and Fuaga tape with Dom C. It was great. Uh, happy Leap Day. Think of it, gang. Go green. All right. Yeah, just some. 
Salutations. Nice. Thank you, Alan. Alan. If you guys want to join the beanbaggers, the uh, link is in the description. We'll we'll uh get that going a little bit more, ref- you know, defined soon. But uh yeah, man, we have a good time. I love my beanbaggers. What a good group of guys we have in there. It's really good, it's good stuff. Uh you know what's funny, uh, Rusty? I was literally, before the stream, I was literally digging into uh, McKinley Jackson. And uh, who's the other guy I was look, just, just looking at? Oh, yeah, Christian Boyd. I was just watching the tape. I was watching the McKinley Jackson game. I like to watch full games, as I, as you do. Uh, and I was watching um, the Auburn game. McKinley, it's not that. I mean, I watched, I think uh, at this point, I just got past the first half. Not the best game from McKinley Jacks. Not necessarily bad, um, but uh, not something that uh, is showing him to be the highly touted fella that he is. But um, there's more. But anyway. I know. I, I, I like, dude, I'm a, you know me, man. I'm a big fan. If we're not looking for a guy to be a penetrator on the defensive line, which I don't think we are, you want a big fatty. Big fatties are hanging around in the sixth. That's fifth, sixth, seventh. That's where they are. That's where they live. Why are you going to go to the house where the thin, speedy wide receivers are and pick a defensive tackle? Just doesn't make sense to me. You go to the bat house and go, hey, it's the sixth round. Anybody weigh 350 and take up what feels like the entire side of the line? Like 12 guys raise their hand. Good. I'll take you. Who's the guy that eats ribeye <laughs> at the barbecue? <laughs> That's what we do. Who pours hot sauce on a ribeye? That's my guy. Get over here. That's what you do. Uh, Jason Edwards, on a lighter note, what is the next Jets jersey you're picking up? Either Brees or Q. Well, I have my Quinn in 95, but I don't wear it because everybody yelled at me, Jason. I'll tell you what I am doing. though. Let me show you guys this. So I, I finally got around to buying the frame. You see what this is, right? Can you tell? Let me move the thing over. See that? So this signed Joe Klecko jersey, courtesy of one project prospect with Dom C., he bought it for me at the beginning of the show, toward like uh, towards the end of last season, I forget. And I've been like meaning, you know what I mean? I'm always meaning to do shit. I'm a very much a procrastinator. And uh, but this, I got it right here. I got my frame. It's right here. So I'm going to be putting this up on the wall. So that'll make me happy. And then I'm also going to put the Quinn and Williams one up. Because if I'm not going to wear the damn thing, I might as well show the damn thing, right? So I got to buy a new jersey. I I have a sauce. uh, Thanks to Buddy, right? Um, But uh, so I have a white legacy sauce, which I love. Um, I mean, I have a bunch of jerseys. But as far as like the legacy stuff moving forward, um, because I don't love our jerseys that we've had the last few years i i just don't i wear it because it's our uniform but i don't love it uh, i love the legacy so clean so so nice so old man <laughs> i love it so old foggy you know um so if i buy my next jersey will probably be a Brees. Probably. Or I got to buy another Quinnen, which would piss me off. I don't like paying for things twice. But I think I'll buy a Brees, Jason. I'll be with you. And when we hang out opening day next year, me, you, and your boy, and Ryan, and Matt, and everybody, um, maybe we have matching Brees Hall jerseys. You know? The only thing is, I don't know if I can get another white one, dude. I keep spilling coffee and shit all over. I just, I'm the worst. It's like my white hats. Do I have it in here or did I put it in the house? I put it in the house. 
I'll tell you what hat I do have. I got this hat. This is a good hat. This hat I like. Not Jets, but I'll I'll keep it on for a little bit. This is a good hat. I like these uh, these uh these old hats. You know what I mean? I forget there's a name for them. I just forget it's I'm burnt. Uh, all right, let's. Uh, I'll get to this, and then I'm going to bring Tigo on. We'll hang out for the last little bit of the of the show. And Tigo looks like he's ready, man. He's in his studio now. Now he's got green light and shit behind him. That means he's ready, you know. When we got green lights behind us, that means we're ready. Like if I'm not ready, it looks like this, or like this, like I'm not really ready. Now, now I'm ready. See. Oh, Tigo's doing it too, right? He's got an orange. Do I have orange? I got red. There we go. Is that red or orange, Tigo? I can't see. I can't hear him. I mean, it's fucking stupid to ask him questions like that. Uh, JV Jets fan, member for seven months. Thank you, my friend. Stream Beaner, stream beaner Extraordinaire. Uh, Green Bean, if you could trade one member of our staff, who would it be and for who? Also, hit those milk thumbs, Jets family, right on. Yeah, man, the like button and the subscribe button are everything in this world, in this YouTube world. And then the bell, you know, people tell me, dude, I don't even know what the hell YouTube never tells me when your shows are on anymore. I don't know. It probably stems from when they demonetized me. You know, that was some crazy stuff, dude. They just, I'm down with it because I played a Beatles song on one fucking on a short. They just said goodbye. And I, appealed i showed them my studio i said look at all my videos they're 99 just me talking i'm not stealing other and they said denied you know what they penalized me for jay-z because i was simulcasting to jet nation so on for our live game streams so i would run it on on my channel and jet nation and they said that i have all kinds of videos long three hour videos that are on other networks that are on uh, from other channels. So I'm like, no, but you gave me the, uh, you allow me to do that. But they penalized me for it. So I had to delete all those games. Anyway, let's see to answer your question. If I could trade a member of the staff, let me bring Tigo on and, and I'll answer this. I'm going to hear what Tigo thinks. So you ready, buddy? You good? Okay. There he is. Tigo. I, I put the red on to be cool like you. You, you, I can you, change it. You changed it, man. Let's see. Here you go. Go, go red. Is it orange or red? I guess that's it's orange. Red. Yeah. It's red. Yeah. Yeah, but do you have this? I don't have that. See, that's why I'm the best in the world. I don't. Ha I don't have the light show. <laughs> What's up? What is this? Oh, that's just craziness. Wait. Cool. So we do that. Wait. Let's see. We got this. What is that? Oh, that's pretty cool. I, that, that's nice and mellow. I'll leave that on for a little bit. That's kind of weird. Two of my lights weren't on. I was like, what the hell? Oh, man. You got to have all the all the guns. got to have all of them on. I paid yeah. for them, right? Yeah. So, all right. So, if we could trade one member of our staff, who would it be? I would trade Hackett. And I would trade him for any other offensive coordinator in the NFL. <laughs> it's the truth. You know, you wouldn't the only get anything thing, for Hackett. Well, if, you know, maybe what? So maybe you can trade Hackett for an unproven guy, some quarterback coach somewhere that's got aspirations to be an offensive coordinator. What about you? Who would you trade if you could? Like, I think the only person I'd be cool with, like, losing as long as we got a major piece for, if it's like on the staff, would be like, what could you get for Brant Boyer? Like, if you could get something that would significantly increase our offensive coaching staff, I would take a dip in special teams performance for an increase in offensive performance. But that would be like, you'd still, like, again, you'd have to, you'd have to give me, like, a, a good piece back because I'm not going to give him, give him up for nothing. Yeah, I don't know, Jay-Z. I mean, it's tough, right? It's like, it's it's tough, you know, because I think Hackett's a, or maybe Keith Carter, right? Like, these are clear candidates for guys you'd love to 
flip, you know, but uh, what are you going to get? That's the thing. I don't fucking want that guy. I don't have Aaron Rodgers, the only guy in the world that loves this coach, you know, so I don't know now. So I don't know that that would be my answer, though. That would be my answer. Uh, Nick says from tampering I'm that what I said is not blackmail. It's not blackmail. It's the conversation. It's a, it's a, it's a deal. Either this is what I'm going to do. It happens all the time. It's not blackmail. I totally agree. Blackmail is saying, you know, you give me this or I tell the world kind of whatever the fucking is. Let, let me look up the actual definition of blackmail. Let me see. Definition. What this is, this is settling. That's what it is. And you know, it's what Deshaun Watson did with his 22 cases. They just settled before the before the judge could give the verdict. That's what we're doing. Hey, That's let's right. make it's a settling. deal. Let's just settling. make a deal. You and me, let's get the courts out of this. Let's get the commissioner out of this. Take Zach for a third round pick, and we'll call That's it right. dead and done. It's okay. Right. It's our you negotiation. Know. It's our settling. Now, look, the it's definition. The definition for blackmail is is a little close, but it says uh, the uh, <laughs> uh, demanding of payment or another benefit from someone in return for not revealing, compromising, or damaging information. Now, this isn't not revealing it; it's already out there. It's just whether or not I pursue it. That's the difference, and that's why I'm totally fine. Make it worth me not like. What is your first round pick worth to you? Because it's right. worth everything to me. I'd yeah. love for you to not have it. That's right. I'd That'd love be it. Great. Right. Anything I can do to weaken you, I'd love it. <clears throat> and like, look, the truth is, is you, 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 you partook in a crime. Now, if you don't want me to pursue that crime, this is what you're going to do. Tigo nailed it. It's a, it's a, uh, it's a settlement. We see that every day. Even lowly fellas like me, I've been involved in court settlements. I've had charges and they go, will you plead guilty to this? And I go, yeah, as long as it's not that, you know, you can do two years in jail or you can pay a thousand dollars and do 30 hours. Ah, oh, that's the one I want. That's the I mean, one I want. One, I want the community service. That yeah. one makes more sense. Yeah, I'm going to, uh, yeah, right. So you're sure the judge ain't going to go back on it? No, nope, it's good. So anyway, shut up, Nick, is my point. Uh, Hen Hennessy, uh, checking back in, he says, thinking about coming to the draft party in Long Island to see the guy's live reaction if we take Dallas Turner. <laughs> Can you imagine, dude? Uh, best player available. He was two on our board. I know, he was right. right. We had him second overall. You couldn't believe he was oh. there at 10. Oh, my God, Hennessy. I might, that said, I, everybody, oh, I might die. Like, uh, don't get me don't, wrong. I'd get, I'd get over it because, like, Dallas Turner is like an incredibly good player, but it yeah. would take me so long to get over it. I, I'd have to see like five sacks before I'm like, all right, okay, whatever. I'd be furious if we did it two years in a row oh. and we still don't have an offensive Why line are you or weapon. The much? world, Hennessy. I know Hennessy, man. You got to stop. Now, I would love to see you at the draft party. Guys, if you don't know, we're having our first ever live in-person draft party, the Talking Jets panel, O'Leary, Ryan, myself. I know Jeremy will be there. I, I think uh, Dom C. and some other fellas. Uh, but, dude, it's going to be a great – we're still going to live stream for the whole thing. We're going to live stream for all three days of the draft. This is just for the, uh, for the first round on that Thursday night. But dude, for 124 bucks, you get three hours open bar, three hours of talking jets buffet, we're calling it. You get a t-shirt and you get to hang out with us uh for a live. There's gonna be live crowd cams. So, like when we see this pick, no matter what, like it's a funny thing. People uh like you know, when we do these live things, Tigo, people like they come back and they go, dude, you fucking reacted this. It's like, it's my initial reaction, right? Because yeah, it's caught. No... I'm live. And so now you get to be caught on camera. Let's see how, let's we'll see how you look. And it's like, uh, you know, sometimes you're like pissed. And then five minutes later you go, you know what? Actually, this is really, you know, or vice versa. That happened to but, me last year. Yeah. But I, initially. My initial reaction was like, what are, what, 
<laughs> and then I thought about it and I was like, I did really like him. Like, I just didn't think he was on the Jets board. Yeah. And then by the time I recorded my video eight minutes later, I was like, this is a great pick. Yeah, I uh, I maintain even to this day, I hate the pick. I'm not saying I hate the player. I think the pick was silly. You know what I mean? Like, I mean, look, you. I don't know if you know. I mean, we didn't talk too much about it, you and I, but my uh, my favorite offensive lineman in last year's draft was Anton Harrison. And the fact that he was still there, I'm like, ooh, okay, man. They're on the same page as Green Bean, yeah. And, you know, I would have loved JSN. You know, I knew, well, who was still there? Was it Addison? I mean, there were so many guys. I was like, okay, I'm fine with all these cats. Kalijah Cansey, bring them on. <laughs> Let me show you guys. Just say, if, if you don't remember, uh, here's what it looked like. That 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 night. In the 2023 NFL draft, the New York Jets. Kyle Stickles, everybody. Wow. All right. What the hell just happened? I didn't see that coming. Yeah. Ryan says, I didn't see that coming. Yeah. Hello. <laughs> Fucking crazy. You know, and again, we're rooting for the kid, right? Of course. But silly pick, man. You could have done so much more. Imagine this, Tigo. Imagine like if last year we took any one of the wide receivers, right? That, you know, that are up there doing well. We're going in this draft and we don't, we don't have that need. I mean, you can third round, sure, you know, fourth or whatever. You can bring somebody on, but you're good. It's already taken care of. Now, this year, instead, what we have is an extra guy, so we're losing a guy we love, and we still have needs at the same positions as last year. Fucking silly, man. I don't, I don't, I don't think wide receiver was ever on the table. You just, you know, spent money on Alan Lazard, and I don't think anybody was going to think that Alan Lazard was going to be this bad. Like, he's just not playable at all. I thought we would at least be getting a wide receiver three. And at the remember, at the draft, we still had Corey Davis on the roster, and you were expecting yeah, he was going to be better with Aaron Rodgers. I think, yeah. I think they looked at the roster and they said, if everyone stays healthy, we're pretty good here. And I think they would have been right. We won seven games with the worst quarterback play I've ever seen. And... How do you how do you have 13 different offensive line? Like how how is that possible? Guys were working at UPS days before suiting up for the Jets. Like, how does that like in what world does that happen? Only to the yeah. Jets, but like it's just True. ridiculous what we went through last year. Well, in the year before, we had like nine different offenses, and it seemed like absurd. To have that happen in back to back years. Yeah. Like, it was just insane. Well, and that's what happens, dude. Like, like, look, again, I've been a Joe Douglas supporter, vocally, outwardly, unabashedly. But last offseason, I had many problems. I didn't like the, the free agency, uh, you know, what we were doing, the way we were handling it. I did not like the draft. Um, I liked Hitman. So let me make that clear. And I liked Carter Warren. I didn't, I didn't like Carter Warren necessarily as the player to take. I forget which guys were there that I liked, but I liked the position. You know what I mean? I liked that he was injured, which is the reason that he slid. He was kind of looked at as, uh, you know, maybe even a second, yeah, uh, round. A second okay. round grade on him. Yep. So, okay. Okay. I'm, I'm with that. Zaire Barnes, Izzy was not a running back that I really – I didn't dislike, but I was like, oh, that's the guy we, that that's the guy, huh? Okay. And then, you know, as we went through, I just didn't love the draft. I didn't love Converse. I didn't, I didn't, I was like, okay, man, this draft is boring me. Um, So, you know, going into that, like I, you know, I just felt like, you know, we had a real opportunity. If you're going to get Aaron Rodgers, like you gotta, you gotta, oh, you know, all guns blazing, dude, make sure this guy is upright and has people to throw it to. Um, and as much support as you can. 
And I just didn't feel like we did that. You know, I didn't feel like we did that. So depending, like having that year in 2022 with the offensive line decimation, remember we were picking people up off of practice squads and they were starting for us two weeks later. Um, Abouye is a, is the best example of that to not, you know, to, to go into 2023 with Aaron Rodgers and still depend on Dwayne Brown and Makai Becton was foolish and no Jets fan felt good about it. Sure. We might've tried to justify it. And the truth is if, if best case scenario worked, like if they were everything that they could be, if they, you know, the top of their potential, sure. There's lots of talent here. Stupid. Still stupid. Like you, you just can't, especially coming out of 2022. Joe Douglas is probably thinking, how likely is it that this happens again to us? Come on. No, absolutely. You, know? you could tell from <laughs> the draft what the plan was. Like it was like we were a quarterback away. We won seven games with Zach. Aaron's going to come in. We're bringing some of his boys in. Like there's no way we're going to have nine guys go down. That's just not, that doesn't happen in back to back years. It doesn't we'll be happen. Fine. And then they went, we're going to draft for the future. Will McDonald, that's a future pick. Izzy, Izzy. Barnes, JB, that's all for the future. Who cares about the now? We've got it. We got the quarterback. And then everything went to shit. And now we're all like, what the hell? Yeah. What the fuck, man? Alan Dode says he would trade Hacky for a copy of Gold Member. There you go. That sounds like a fair trade. That's pretty fair. It's good value. Because, you know, you can watch Gold Member many times. Yeah. Was that your uh, favorite one? I, I That was my least favorite Austin Powers, although it was still funny. That was a that was good shit, that Austin Powers stuff, though. I got to say. One Jets pod wasn't a fan of the Izzy pick either. I was. That was a big... I. I really yeah. like Izzy. I didn't think he was necessarily the best fit for us just because of his play style. But I thought with, with the speed that he has, if he can get yeah. into the right place, into the right system, he's going to be explosive. Yeah. Well, he provided something that we didn't have, <clears throat> which was at least logically I understood it. You know what I mean? Yeah, it was just game-breaking speed. Like he's yeah. just – that play in the preseason – where he turned the corner and then beats the DB to the, to the pylon. That to me was like, okay, I'm a fan of Izzy. He still has development going on, which is why I think that a sneaky need for the jets is a running back too. I think that we might be in the running back market in free agency, especially with how like good it is. But yeah, it all depends on the, the price, right? Of course, of course. But like, I, would you be surprised if Singletary came to the Jets? Like, you know what I mean? Like, no. Oh. That that's that's my kind of thing. Is I think yeah. that there's a little as bit. As long as we don't a, go for like, I don't, you know, like the whole Dalvin Cook thing. Even though, look, I bought in, of course. Like out of the gate, I was like, eh, I don't know. I understood the need, right? I understood the need. One of the biggest positives I I got from this off season was that we let our running backs coach go to uh, Embry. I th I thought after I thought he there was no way he was going to be able to keep his job. Michael Carter fell off the face of the face of the planet. Izzy didn't develop. Dalvin Cook couldn't get anything going. Like I I mentioned this I think in a video that I was making. Like I'm not going to give credit to coaches when superstars do superstar things. Right? Like Aziana right. doesn't get credit for Garrett Wilson having another thousand year season. Like that Garrett Wilson was going to do that no matter what. What he does get credit for is like Xavier Gibson and Irv Charles and Jason Brownlee. Like those are three undrafted free agents that all played, made, had the roster time. The same way I'm not going to give Embry credit for Brees, but I am going to look at Michael Carter fell off the face of the planet and couldn't get going. It's crazy. Uh, Izzy couldn't make the roster. Cook didn't look anywhere. And there's analytics to back that up or whatever. But like, him being gone was one I think one of the best moves, and so I think I think running back is a sneaky need for the Jets, and I wouldn't be surprised if we spent a little bit more money than people are anticipating in free agency at running back. 
You don't have any money, man. So I just, I, I hear you, and I'm not against that. But as long as we get the offensive line guys that we need going into the draft, wide receiver, I think wide receiver is going to be the big thing because there's actually a nice crop. You know, you got to get it. You got to get it. Now, um, let me say, so where is it? Uh, fingers crossed. Yeah, Sam Aiken. Thank you, buddy. Fingers crossed Jason Fabini will announce Fuaga at 10. He is nasty. Who else do you think is a tough player? I'll show you who I think is a tough player. Here we go. And this is a guy, this is the running back that I want to bring in. You guys have heard it a thousand times from me. Well, let's just do it. This is my guy right here. Here he goes. Look at him carrying dudes. That's five yards after contact. By the way, he likes to catch. Here you go. Screw you, buddy. Right into the end zone. I'll take that. Look at it. I'll show one more. That's right. He likes to hit people. Maybe one more. There we go. That's right. Hit that guy, too. Look at him. Fuck you. All right. Another one. That's it. After this one. Yeah, look at him. It's fast. That's right. Run that guy over. I don't care. That's what I'm talking about, everybody. That's Carson Steele. Okay? You don't need a guy up top. You just wait a little bit. You grab Carson Steele later in the draft, and you call it a day. You let him come on in behind uh, Brees. I mean, we need more. It's just crazy. We let Bam go, and we traded Michael Carter, and now we got uh, we got Brees and Izzy. So it's an interesting thing. But I think that's a tough son of a bitch right there, man. And I look, my you tough guys. The seventh, man. That's the craziest part. Uh, he, uh, yeah, I, I think he's going to go before the seventh. But uh, I mean, I think teams are going to see it. You know, they're going to go. You know what, man? I'm willing to reach. Not not even reach, but I'm willing to pull the trigger around early for a guy like that he, he's gonna he's going to be good now he's not gonna be the bell cow i don't think that's his role but he's going to be a solid role player and you need those guys um so anyway i like my thing with tough guys like of course i talk about the offensive and defensive line all the time and linebackers and all that shit but the truth is is i like tough guy wide receivers i like tough oh. guy running backs i like I wide receivers that, that love- block knock yes. your head off Yes, I love wide receivers that are bought into the run game, that are like just mean and nasty in the run game because that just I I like wide receivers that make a DB's like they they just hate that they have to line up in front of this guy every single play, you know, just mean and aggressive for no reason. Now, I'm going to show this. I'm not going to say it out loud because I don't want anybody to hear it over there. But, dude, drop the hammer, Dakota. Okay? Yeah. Get get that right. Get that right, buddy. <laughs> oh, man. I tell you. You know, did you, there's these reels. That I've, I've been following these sites, uh, you know, these pages on Instagram, Tigo. That's, like, all about, like, the simple, the simplicity that men enjoy just like sites oh, yeah. about men you know just like and there's this one it's like these guys it's called the uh the english grass whistle and this guy just goes here's the english grass whistle he pulls on this blade of grass it's big and he goes and all of a sudden all these guys run over and they're all pulling on it and they're laughing and it's just a funny thing man and it's like you know there was that one it said uh you know, this this woman goes, what would men do in this world without women? And it shows all these guys, like the first scene is like a bunch of guys riding go-karts in a circle, shooting fucking Roman candles in the air. And the song's, life would be dream, do-do-do-do. And it's like, it's just so fun. Of course, I look, I love my wife. I love, oh yeah, you know, women. It's like, I don't have any issue. But it is a funny thing. It's like how simple it really is. Like, just give us a fire. And the fucking couple chairs. And I did not you know, to prove that that's a genetic thing. So I have a one year old, right? He's gonna be two in a couple months, but I'm still calling him a one year old. And so up north, we have like three, four acres of land, and we were doing, we had a we had a fire pit, so we had just cut down a tree, we were burning all the wood and all that stuff. 
And I thought, oh, it's just like, and it's just probably just like a me and my dad thing where it's just like, no fire is perfect. I always got to be stoking the fire. I always got to be doing something with the fire. And then I saw my one year old and he was just, and he wouldn't take his eyes off the fire. He's like in and around it, enthralled by it. I was like, oh, no, it's just, that's genetics. Yeah. That's a, that's a guy thing. You just got, you just, and once the fire went out, he was like, okay, I can go inside now. And it was like hours. He was just out there, just yep. staring at the fire. And he Dude, would leave, go get a toy, and he would go right back, right right next to the fire. Yeah. That's why I like this whole thing. You know, I don't know. I'm not going to get into it. But, um, yeah. you know. I was just. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Let's stay away from it. You know who just showed up, Tigo? Well, speaking of women, let's uh, let's just let, look who showed up. Look at this guy. Hey. Look at this guy. <laughs> <laughs> Jeremy, up? where you been, dude? Everything okay? Yeah, no, no. I was doing uh, onboarding. It was a, it's a good thing. It was a training for my where I'm doing my internship for. Oh, I good. Can't, they can't send me new clients until they, you know, until they know that I know what to do. <laughs> yeah. All right. You know, well, hey. oh, Dom, Dom chose violence today. <laughs> Marcus May just released to bring Van. <laughs> right? Imagine. Imagine you re-signed May and uh, and Adams. Oh my God! Oh, oh he chose violence. So painful. Hey, Jeremy, this yeah. is for you. If we take Brock at ten, what's the reaction? Uh, it, it depends on what what happened in free agency. You have to. Tell yeah, me for agency. sure. I mean, if we really did an amazing job of addressing, you know, the offensive line, I mean, there could be worse picks. Yeah, yeah, tell me what the, tell me what the projected starting five is, and then I'll tell you what my reaction is. Right, because I mean, let's face it: if we're confident in the offensive line, this would not be a bad weapon to add to the arsenal at all. Yeah, yeah, I don't know how I feel. Um, this, yeah, if you tell me we got like Cam Robinson, Hunt, and Cushionberry in free agency, I'd be I'd be over the moon, but like, if you're telling me, oh, we didn't do anything in free agency, and our starting offensive line is AVT, Carter Warren, Joe Titman, Wes Schweitzer, and Connor McGovern. Ooh. And if we didn't add any other wide receivers, I mean, it might be enough to have Garrett and Brock. Yeah, I mean, you know, hey, I like, think did you take I, did you take Brock over Odunze or Neighbors? Because then I'm upset. Well, you'd have to, I think. Like, and I, I mean, that's what I see. The so the whole the whole thing is once you have a one two, then your threes and fours fill in that role. Then it's a whole different thing. When you're depending on fours, fives to be twos and threes, that's where the issue comes in. If you have a really solid and competent one and two, like for example, uh, what we think Brock's going to be and Garrett Wilson. Then Gibson and Lazard become service. They become adequate. Uh, it's when you hope Lazard is your number two. Can't have that. You know, I still think Lazard. I mean, look, dude, the Zach Wilson no touch thing is real. Yeah, it's real. How many drops? Oh, everybody's fucking dropping his passes. Boom. There's a common denominator here, everybody. Uh, Jason Edwards checking back in. Thank you, buddy. He says we have a Jets curse and a Jets tax. I want a Jets championship and soon. <laughs> good broadway joe flash gordon now Aaron. i know it's just so funny that we got to pull out the flash gordon you know that's why my dad greatest fan. well dude he saved the universe man what do you want every one of us he saved every one of us <laughs> that's so good jason uh so all right we're gonna we're gonna get out of here um we're gonna end this one Few minutes. I'm glad. I'm glad to see you, though, Jeremy. It's nice to see you. Jeremy's no, gonna be up and say hi. It's been a while, so yeah, yeah. I know. It's like we. I haven't been able to pull it together for the Thursday show. Hopefully, I mean, I think we'll be good moving forward uh, for the Thursday show. I uh, got some guests lined up um, for the Thursday show, so we'll have some exciting, fun times. I also have some guests for the Monday Night Mock. Uh, that'll be fun. Uh, but uh, I always love having guests on there because it changes everything. Changes yeah. everything when you let a guest come on and kind of tilt it. It's good shit. I let um, I, I let a twelve year old come on mine, Connor. Yeah, and, well, Connor, I was just talking to him tonight. He took over the entire. He took over the entire draft. 
<laughs> Did he really? Oh, that's good. Connor's great. He's a good kid. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so uh anyway, I think what tomorrow's Friday. What the hell am I doing over here? There we go. So uh yeah, anyway. Uh, Jeremy popped in. Jeremy's got Jets chaos going on. Uh, oh, he did the thing uh, every Thursday, talking Jets channel with Matt O'Leary at 3 p.m. He going myself to Armchair GM Wednesday nights at 8 p.m., followed by the Beanbaggers private Zoom discussions, uh, which is fun. Um, and, uh, yeah, I think that's about it. But we don't have any game streams or nothing. Mexican football hasn't started yet, so we don't even have that. Right, we're <laughs> gonna get that going. The Hefes, that's my team. What, what, what if we found? What if we found a game from the past, a decade from the past? Green Bay, we played it and did a reaction party to it, as if we were watching it live. Yeah, we should. And you know what else I want? I want to like put on one of the games that we reacted to and react to us. <laughs> <laughs> Just reaction. Like these guys are morons. That's great. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we'll do that. Uh, Braden says Flash Gordon's why he's a Jets fan. <laughs> That's so good. I bet it is. Yeah, my dad was uh, in Braden, Brazil, I... didn't know what American football was, and then Flash yeah. Gordon came to the. That's right. He's like, look at the, the Jets quarterback. Like, this is the the Jets must yeah. be the best team on the planet. The it's Jets quarterback the is saving the universe for God's sakes. He took care of Ming the Merciless. I mean, come on, what are you gonna do? Uh, with that all said, guys, we're gonna get out of here. I love all of you sincerely going to be a good off season. We got the combine, we got free agency, we got the draft all coming up. Uh don't forget about oh, I got to do the giveaway. That's right. Oh, there it is. That's what it was. I'm like, I'm forgetting something. Um we have 18. So let me get my number generator going. Life would be dream. Ba -doo -ba -doo -doo. Let me see. Random number generator. All right, let me share my screen with all y'all. This is for the free liquid IV pack. All right, there it is. So we got 17. Is that what I, 18? Oh, is there another one just came in, Jeremy? Nope. Okay, 18. Here we go. Three, two, one, boom. Number one. I don't think I've ever seen that before. <laughs> That's this fella right here. Hey, the main catch. Uh, wins with the first super chat of the night. So, uh, main catch, reach out to me uh, via email. My email's in the description of the video. Just reach out, tell me your address, what flavor you want. Excuse me, I have cotton candy, banana, tropical punch. <laughs> Take the tropical punch and then send me one. <laughs> oh, I also have crisp apple. <laughs> Ooh, that sounds nice. The Concord grape, that's going to Jake. Tropical punch. Cotton candy. It's like, a, like a kid going to his uh, Halloween. And I got this candy. thing. Anybody <laughs> want this thing? It's a big pencil they gave me. Oh, with little good. pencils in it. <laughs> it's like a Russian. Lot. What's that Russian toy called? A babushka. babushka. Yeah, babushka. <laughs> I have those. I got them from the... From Prague. I got a bunch of them. From Prague. Yeah, yeah. Matryoshka doll. Yeah. Oh, and banana. Ain't nobody want banana. Nobody. Havana banana. It says four it kids on it. It does. Yeah. What? So you can't drink it? No. They just not. make it. They just make it. No, that's what this whole thing is. It's a well, kid's my kid just had bananas the other day. It was his first food. He loves it. Yeah. There you like go. Bananas. Okay. Electrolytes for kids. There you go. So, all right. Save 15% on liquid IV. But don't forget about, I put the link in there, the Aura free two-week trial, everybody. Um, you can uh, click that link in there. Go get your 14-day free trial for the number one rated identity protection on the market today. And, uh, yeah, if you, if you like it, it's only $12 a month after that. But, uh, yeah, so all kinds of fun shit that we're offering here. I'm Green Bean Jets fan. But with that all said, guys, have a great night. We love you. Where the hell is it? And we'll see you next time. Yeah, here we come, baby. Here we come. Here come the Jets, baby.
want to kiss you. Thanks, Joe. Yeah! You want to run or you want to duck down? You want to duck to the corner and get onto the bench and stay there. You play to win the game. Hello? My message for the fans, we're all frustrated with where we are right now. J-E-T-S, Jets, Jets, Jets.